obviously we had clients booked in, but now that kind of um, uh, process has changed slightly because we are like, like we're all saying, we're reassuring our clients that we're doing everything we can possible. So myself and Ella have been in the salon the past two weeks. We're now adjusting the space, um, refreshing, deep cleaning. Um, and, and then obviously we're now receiving deliveries for our, our equip, our PPE equipment and, and, and what we've ordered. So we can start to implement that. And, uh, going forward now, we, we will be directly contacting clients to sort out appointments like, um, Alan, um, was saying earlier, and, and we'll, we'll start to obviously reassure them at that stage as well. We're going to create a little video, um, to talk through the process of the salon and what to expect when they arrive. Um, and also like a, a policy video. So obviously we can kind of explain to them what we expect from them to help us to help them if that makes sense as well so yeah. uh, i think it's like uh, david said communication across the whole is so important now we've had it in abundance in our industry which has been amazing i've been in contact with a friend in australia who's been open a few weeks and she's given me some great support there and shared that on my page and mm -hmm. what have you so i think we there's so much tools out there to utilize and uh like we're all saying, it's, it's going to be down to the, what, what we're eventually told, but then also we, not forgetting we are a super hygienic industry anyway, mm -hmm. and we, we had great hygiene measures before this. So anything we add to that now is going to enforce it to be even better and better in the long run. So, you know, that, that's, that's the key, I think. I think it's grabbing this as an opportunity as well, as, as much as it is a huge headache for, for all of us. Um, it is a massive opportunity, as Gavin says, to get in, do that deep clean, do any refreshing that you need to do. Um, and not necessarily spending lots and lots of money, but really making sure this space is as clean and beautiful as it can be. Um, yeah. I think that's a key word that you said there, as beautiful as can be. And I think the last thing we want to do is to lose our, our, our vibe and our, the, the aesthetic of our salons. We've got to still make it comfortable. We've still got to make it inviting and warm. What we yeah. don't want is that sterile environment. That's it mm -hmm. almost is edging towards that way. Yes, yeah. I think we could probably use our creativity and our our, our design minds and, and create a space which can still be as beautiful as we already know it. Um, but at the same time, having these safe measures in place um, and it's just being in inventive with it all. I think. Yeah. Amazing. I'm just going to jump in. And um, there was a slight issue with Facebook before. So for anyone who's just joining on Facebook, I'm just going to do a little reminder about what this session is all about in case you're thinking, what, what am I watching now? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so this is our business panel debate with um, some of the 2019 British Hairdressing Business Award winners. So we've got the amazing Alan Simpson, who's HJ's Business Director of the Year. Gavin McIntyre, who won Salon of the Year too, Liam Fry, who won Manager of the Year, and David Ackroyd, who won Franchisee of the Year and has a franchise with Tony and Guy. So we've got amazing experts here and award winners, um, and they're sharing with us um, the amazing work they're doing within their businesses during lockdown, how they're preparing to reopen, and, hope, and share, hopefully sharing some tips and ideas for what you could implement as well. Fantastic. So I just wanted to refresh that for anyone who... Um, struggled to watch on Facebook beforehand. Um, brilliant. So let's maybe move on to now that obviously we've spoken a little bit around the reopening and there's all these issues around the PPE. So how have you been tackling the issues surrounding PPE from a business perspective? How are you going to incorporate that in terms of the pricing you'll have to put into your salon, knowing what to get for the salon, all that kind of thing? What, what are sort of your thoughts on? If you don't, if no one minds, I'll jump in. Yeah. I saw, um, I've spoken to a few sort of other business owners and there's kind of mixed feeling at the moment amongst everyone I've spoken to in the sense of having a surcharge could alienate a client to think that it's just a profiteering measure, but then obviously building it into a cost then means you could be taking a bigger jump up in, in obviously what you're going to be charging. So I think that, I think ultimately um, the feeling as a whole is obviously the PPE um, costing shouldn't obviously fall onto the salon because this is a measure that, um, it's come enforced and, and in a sense um, we, we, we want to keep everybody safe but we can we, our hands are tied to some degree um, like what um, Liam's saying we don't want to it's not a profiteering time in a sense of juggling our profits it's about keeping everyone safe so you know I, I think me and Ella certainly feel having a safety charge would be a good option to do at this stage and it and I've seen a lot of talking forums it's ranging from three to six pounds depending on obviously how much you are implementing yeah. but um, initially, at the moment, our main our main um, additions have been disposable gowns, uh, gloves, and masks for the team and for clients. So, um, and obviously, we've looked had a chance to look at what we are using as a cleaning um, tool as well. So, 
Um, until the guidelines come in, it probably will be difficult to say what a charge should be because yeah. uh, it's about obviously working out the cost as a whole. But yeah. I don't know how you guys feel in terms of what I've just said there in terms I, of having a surcharge or a charge in, in the price built yeah, in. I keep, I keep flip-flopping on the idea of what I'm going to be doing regarding um, whether I'm going to implement it as a price increase, as a general price increase, or if I'm going to be dealing with it as a separate surcharge, whether you want to call it sanitization fee or whatever it might be. Um, it's it, it comes down to I think the individual salon um, and what their needs are. Some salons might be able to absorb the loss of, of buying out the PPE. Some salons could probably not afford that loss. Mm -hmm. So I think you've just got to look at what your salon needs individually and what you guys need. Um, however, at the same time, personally, I'm edging now towards more of a general price increase. Um, just a simple fact that you're going to be doing. I, I, we personally do a yearly price increase. I think it would be important to have to do that anyway. I think we were planning to do it back in February anyway. Um, so we might as well just put it up personally anyway. I feel that's the right way forward. That way you're not feeling like you're penalising people when they're not, unless you're being really clear of your clients, you, they might come in feeling like they're all of a sudden being penalised. But I don't know, I do keep flipping and flopping backwards and forwards on it all. It was actually one of, one of the people said to me, if you do do a surcharge, then do you take that price away if measures get taken away? But then actually yeah. the measures may stay, which means the cost is still, still there to some degree. And how yeah. can you explain that to your client? So it goes down by half or so the, the general pricing thing is, is, a, is a strong argument for that, I think. Yeah, yeah, we're um, we're looking at implementing it into our into our regular cost, and I think as an industry we need to have confidence in our service as well. Our clients love yeah. us; mm. they they yeah. they know us really well. And I think paying maybe sort of two or three pounds extra on, on top of their normal service to know that they're safe, um, I think we need to have we need to have confidence with that. Right, twenty yeah. percent price increase all round, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, I guess if everyone does it, there won't be any competition because everyone's prices would have gone up. Um, <laughs> With the, the, with the costs that we're going to incur, obviously, I'm not doing the same amount of clients and the cost of the PPE, isn't it? And it's, the margins will be squeezed anyway. But, um, but we're the same. We're looking at a, a general price increase, incorporating that way. Um, I think that's probably the best strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've had, we've had um, someone, um, Tony White has jumped in and said, um, is this not more of a health and safety issue rather than waiting for guidelines from the government in terms of the PPE aspect? I think personally, I think how far you can go to the ends of the earth. Okay, so you could put a tent around something. Is that how far do you go? What is enough? Yeah. And I think the reality is at the moment, we just don't know what enough is. Um, like, you, like I said, you could put a tent around something, but it's like, is that really necessary? Is it feasible to go to the extents? Because we're going to have clients from each end of the spectrum. Some people are going to give a real, be really super sensitive on it. And other people are going to be really quite, chilled about it and won't really care about it at all yeah. but you've got to cater for everyone within that space but you can only go so far so the question is is we need those guidelines to know how far we can go in the meantime do what you feels right you know do what you feels right in your salon it might be the means that you have to whether it's a disposable case whatever it might be um but get those things in place but when the guidelines do come out if you've gone up over and beyond great that's that's beneficial to you as a business yeah, I agree. I think we've, we've been very much trying to sort of uh, just, just look at what we want to do as a company. Um, and then with the hope, I mean, I, we're, all, we're all professionals, uh, us, us four here at running our businesses. And I think that we'll, we'll be aiming for aiming for the highest level anyway. Um, so it's a good chance that we uh, we will already, you know, have, have thought about what the government will inevitably announce. But you're right. It, it is a health and safety issue. Um, and I think it's a case of just getting the balance right, really. Um, I've been working on my risk assessments this week with the coronavirus and social distancing and starting to get my head around that. So it's a balance between health and safety and service, I think. Definitely. We've just had yeah. um, Laura Bates has just said in regards to PPE, um, she's used her grant to purchase PPE and she won't be charging her clients for this. And she's just done an annual price increase. So that will help. That was yeah. her thoughts on that. And then Rosalind Hook has said um, reopening um, in terms of when to reopen. Um, when do you guys feel like you will be ready to reopen? How soon is too soon? I guess that's the, the question. How soon is too soon? I think if you're prepared, when we're thinking either the 4th or the 6th of July, if things continue. 
on that path? I think you've got to. You've got to have. The, I mean, we've been uh, as a salon that's rescheduling people and moving people to different times. We're now calling people up for the second time to move them forward because we didn't know how long this was going to go on for. So I think it's uh, we've got to keep putting these milestones in place and just let the clients know or, or the team know that these aren't set in stone. They're going to be flexible. They're going to move depending on the situation. I think the 4th or the 6th of July is a solid day. For us personally, we're going for the 4th. It's a Saturday. Um, we've got a few of the less of the team in so we can get a good gauge of how the new feet, uh, new measure being put in place and how they're going to be working. So it's always going to be like a tester before that weekend. And then we can go into the new week with, um, with them all in place feeling good. Yeah. Yeah, as a group, we've been uh, we're at the early part of last month before the uh, before this latest announcement came for early July. We were really having a, a huge push to be ready um, for June, which mm -hmm. was the original um, date that we were thinking. Yeah. Um, so salon wise, you know, all, all the spaces are now clean and gorgeous and ready to go. Um, we can focus on the education and just just take our time with it now. Um, and of course, around that weekend, we may have National Hair Sunday. Um, I don't think we'd be definite date has been announced yet um but if we open on the fourth we may have that on the on the fifth so that's something to, to think about too mm. yeah cool are you planning on doing i've heard a few salons are sort of talking about doing like a training a training day for the team before doing a full opening day we definitely thought? planning that yeah for the teams look at i suppose really it's looking at your client journey and updating it really for us it's we want to bring them in in small groups and, and just go through the whole new way of work and the, and the procedures. We've rewritten up the what, what we call our customer journey, what we call contemporary standard. Um, but we've also put one together for clients as well. So we just really want to make sure everyone's fully aware of what the new measures are likely to be. Yeah, I uh, think yeah, so. so. I think we got um, every year at our salon, we do something called a TW day, which means that we get the whole team together and we just go through our manual we go through what's expected from each person and we're just going to do that again but bringing in all the new measures and the new ways of doing things because the last thing you want I mean I don't know how many people you've got guys working for you guys but we've got up to I think we've got about 18 people in our salon so we need to make sure that everyone's on the right page um, because if one person's not you're going to get picked up on it and you want to be running as smoothly as possible yeah, yeah. definitely yeah we're looking to sort of come back quite slowly really so um not not unfurlough everybody in, in the in the same day because it like you say it takes time to do that training and it's really important that we absolutely get it right on every every situation so it will be a case of a couple of team members every few days I think until we get it right and back up to speed. I think it's important for the team to be confident as well. We 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 we're in uh, you know a lot of com communication with our team and I think it's when that when that first day opens it's important the team are confident in what they're telling the clients because they're going to be guiding them so um obviously me and Ella ourselves will have clients coming in to see us and we, we need to feel confident our team are behind us they're confident in what our policy is so when clients come in if they are questioned anything then they're going to give a strong answer back and it's going to assure the clientele as well which is only going to work better in our favor as as the as the weeks go on um so yeah, I, I, we, we, we're going to do a team training day. Um, I think I think it's the uh, the Thursday or the Friday before we reopen on the on the fourth. So just so everyone's clear. Brilliant. Are you planning to do? Are you going to be doing extra long working hours, or maybe opening an extra day, or are you, how are you going to? Are you planning anything around trying to accommodate as many clients as you can within the what's permitted? We were we were really really small salon, so um, you know, looking at that sort of fifty percent in in reduction of chairs that we're able to use, we've really got to think quite carefully about this. Um, so yeah, we're we're very much looking at opening earlier and later, um, not just for the capacity, but for those vulnerable people who might want to be in the salon just with their hairdresser as well. Um, and then mixing with that, you know, we're we're starting the training online with our teams this week with our gold standard hygiene code. So we should be by the time we get to next month we should be very well versed in how to talk about it but opening hours is definitely something to look at fantastic mm. we're getting quite a lot of questions coming in through um facebook so i'm going to try and whiz through them and maybe whoever wants to jump in because there's quite a few <laughs> um so lorraine stubbs has said are you still going to charge extra even though we aren't supposed to be blow drying that's still not i don't think that's something that's been official yet is it no, I, don't think no. I think it, we just got to wait I mean I've spoken to people in different countries I've got some a friend of mine in Singapore they've been back to work for a good month or so now um, 
and they're not allowed to color hair yet you know it's yeah. it's so varied in so many different countries and um i think we just got to just just hold out don't make anything too set in stone just yet just hold out until those new measures are being told us to exactly what we can and can't do yeah i've been trying to educate myself on all the different options uh ready to make that decision once we do know what the mm. guidelines are hopefully we'll get a couple of weeks but perhaps not um if we are if we are doing shorter services because we're not blow drying then then we'll think about the pricing accordingly mm. brilliant and then um carla caught real she obviously caught our um h show goes live session yesterday which is fantastic we had one yesterday with simon and raymond from my salon manager um, supported by well professionals about price increases within the salon and she got an idea from the session she said will you be adding a covid fee and um, she said i got an idea from yesterday's hj interview um for, for instance having asking for a three pounds fee and donating one pound to the nhs and um, would you consider doing anything like that it's a great idea isn't it you know yeah. it's, it's there's so many things that you can do to help rally up any sort of financials for any other needy cause shall we say um you, you can do absolutely great idea mm. like that uh, fantastic and then nigel kenny has said um um a general price increase will take need to take into consideration headcount as it's going to be dramatically reduced yeah uh, definitely yeah, I mean, that's the, re the reason why you need to be doing it isn't it needing to consider the impact of you you know your, your business you've got to think about the reduction in your um, income coming in is going to be dramatic. So yeah, it's definitely. You, enough. I think anything like, you have to look at all your costs, not just price increases. You know, you're looking at your income, you're looking at your expenditure, and, which I think most of us, by sounds of it, have been doing anyway. So I think probably reopening it up will probably be a lot more efficient than what we were previously. Fantastic. And then we've well, definitely we've got, a time to look at the bottom line, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've got a great question, which is for all of you. It'd be interesting for all of you to respond to this one. What courses have you been doing? Um, she's, um, Rosalind said, apart from Barberside. <laughs> oh, my God. What courses have you been doing um, during lockdown in preparation for reopening? <laughs> oh, God. I, I, God I've, I've, I've kind of looked at a few um, mainly hygienic ones because, obviously, that is something that... Uh, that I was hoping would shed light on what we would be looking at when we go back. But um, I, I mean, there's been so many out there and um, there's been some great forums and communities that have been set up on social media, which is obviously what social media is so great for. Um, and and I, I think it's the ones that have jumped out of me have been the ones that have, have been helping to prepare for what we might face on a colour level and a, a cut level for when we go back, because there is going to be a lot of grown out hair, hopefully. Um, I know when I spoke to Wendy in Australia, she said there's so many people come back for colour correction and colour changes. So the, um, the fact that there's been courses out there in particular that have honed in on that area, um, bleach uh, or lightning expertise um, and that sort of thing, that's, that's something I've kept a close eye on because I do feel we probably will see a lot of that. Mm. And just courses as well that I've touched upon, obviously, what to expect when we get back. You're not just going to have your normal root service. It's going to be extended. There's going to be... Um, your, re your regrowth plus a regrowth almost to look at and to be bearing that sort of thing in mind. So just, yeah, courses that are kind of prepped, ready for us to be able to educate the team on what to expect when we're back. Yeah, definitely. Um, we've um, been, get, well, I don't know if it's similar to your guys' um, colour companies, but our colour company has been pretty good with um, online training. So things like coming back to work and stuff like that after this period of time, what are we going to be dealing with? Um, and... I personally haven't been doing it because business, right? But um, at the same time, we've been passing it out to the team. They've been able to get onto it if they want to, you know, on furlough, do whatever they want. Um, but at the same time, it's the opportunity is there for them to use it if they want to. Yeah. And we've been tapping into the um, absolute gold mine that, is, that comes with being part of a huge brand like Tony and Guy. There's just been so much going on. Um, we set up a breakfast club um, by the artistic team, which has been run on Instagram for our, for our teams in-house. Uh, led by Cos Pakas, who's just been nominated for British Hairdresser of the Year. Um, so that's been at nine o'clock um, several mornings a week. Um, we've been live streaming our collections to our teams as well. So we can really use the time to sort of get up to speed with, uh, with what's current. Um, and like you say, really colour upskilling as well, working with Wella or L'Oreal for a huge amount of information online for free, which has just been fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. 
and there have been Zoom calls going on with the artistic team as well. So across the board, there's been so much to get involved with. Fantastic. Um, and we've got actually, speaking about colour, Lauren um, Connors has said that um, her salon is going to charge a surcharge, offer a surcharge to cover for PPE, but also an immediate add-on because people will need extra colour to touch up uh, um, their, you know, grown out roots and whatever. Are you thinking about do, charging clients extra for that extra amount of colour that would have accumulated during lockdown? I think, personally, I think you've got to, I think the client, what we've been doing, sorry, I'll backtrack a bit, um, is I've got, I'm very lucky, I've got a group of girls who are helping me deal with all the rescheduling. Um, they've been absolutely brilliant. But what they've been doing, what we've been doing is, is predicting their future hair. So, for example, if someone's having a re retouch three months ago, they're going to need something more. We've been booking them in for an hour appointment rather than a half an hour appointment. So you've just got to use yourself and try and just imagine how is their hair going to be at this point in time and, and adjust accordingly. You know, if, if you need to be spending more time with someone, you should be generally spending more spending more money. So, um, yeah, absolutely. The price should be going up, I think, if you're spending more time with them. Yeah, we're, we're allowing extra mm -hmm. extra time with all of our um, appointments anyway so yet very much uh, you know we'll be needing to charge for that mm -hmm. um, but we we kind of have a, a basic price for our color anyway and then take into account any extra color that's used generally so perhaps it's something to look at as a salon and um, just break down your pricing a bit more and this mm -hmm. will be where consultation is key because if as long as you're communicating with the client to tell them what's going to be needed for to get their hair back to what it should be um, pre-lockdown isolation whatever you want to call it then I, you know I don't think they're going to have a problem with that but, you know if, if you're going in and saying oh we're going to do colour roots today and then you put it you put the root colour on and then at the end they're getting an, an additional charge they're going to question why because it's a service they normally have so yeah. um, you know I think as long as you're communicating and there's uh, consultation in in Genie McIntyre's is so important with our team and uh, that's that's what a lot of bulk of our training is on so um you know, we, we, we will we'll be obviously explaining everything we need to explain to, to clients so they're fully aware of what their bill will be and what to expect, so. Yeah, oh, we'll be the same with that really as well, through consultation and will be additional charge with colour, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Consultation is, um, is, is going to be hugely important and um, I'd say to not miss the opportunity of looking at everybody now like a blank canvas as well, yeah. don't necessarily mm -hmm. revert back to the colour they had two months ago, um, have a conversation and, and see where we go from here. Take chance to move my hair on. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Lisa Dean, actually, she's saying, how are you going to work out the time scales for all these colour corrections that are going to be coming in and then you've got to try and get clients in and out as soon as you can? And This, yeah, this is a massive question from my team more than anything. It's like, how are we going to deal with these colour corrections, especially if they've done their own hair at home, mm -hmm. which they will have, um, especially if um, they've messed it up or we're dealing with stuff that we just won't see coming um, and the way that I'm personally going to be tackling it is we can only do so much within a certain time frame and we are the professional so we need to let the client know this is the transparency and keeping it clear that we're going to tackle this this and this first and then later on get them booked back in whatever it is we're going to deal with this because you can't go yeah let's do it in half an hour because it's just not going to be possible, especially the amount of people that we've got coming in. So I think we need to be really um, stringent in regards to uh, and really clear with our clients and in what we are going to be able to achieve with the time frames that we've got. Whether if it's just covering their roots, I'm sure they're going to be super happy with just having their roots covered. Yeah, I think, I think video consultation might play a key part in this. So it's about diagnosing with the, the client what, what it is they hope we're trying to communicate as much as we can before they come to the salon in the time scale you've got to diagnose what it is they're going to be doing with their hair. And if you feel that video consultation is necessary, then, um, you know, we, you roll that out. I mean, we have been doing a bit of that um, from home already. Um, so some clients have contacted us about their appointment and saying, I, I feel like I'm going to need something a bit more extensive. We've, had, we've done a video consultation with them between me and Ella. So, um, and obviously filled out our consultation forms and we'll pass it on to the stylist in, in the salon when the time comes. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's thinking outside the box to some degree as well, because it, times are different and equally so. This could be something that could be brought in as a part of the service and the client journey in the salon now, which will make it even more responsive and better than what it was before. Yeah, we're looking at branded um, Tony and Guy Zoom consultations um, and it's, it's then a, 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 a balance between doing huge colour corrections, but possibly working with the two hour time limit. So um, it will be a conversation that needs to be had with 
the individual client. Okay. It might be, um, oh, maybe Alan, you can answer this question for me. Um, will you be doing cuts between colour appointments? Initially, we're not planning on doing that. Um, I suppose, that, again, it's coming back and understanding the clients that you've got in the salon and the space that you've got. I think for reassurance initially opening up, I think it most clients would feel better that you're not going in touching another client and coming back to them. So for that reason, in the first month, we're sort of looking at on a one-to-one -one basis only. We will reassess that, obviously, but mm -hmm. initially that's what we're planning for ourselves to give confidence to clients. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And then we've got a question here which taps into a topic that you all seemed keen for us to talk about today, um, which came up during our chat yesterday, um, and that's about recruitment. And um, Samantha Smith has said, what do you think about recruiting right now? Do you have any thoughts or advice for how to, for how to do recruitment? Well, well I think you, you, we all need to recruit. I mean, I think it's probably difficult to, you've got, we've all got the moment if, if staff are with their current employers and are on furlough, they're not going to be readily moving around. But I mean, obviously, if you're looking for apprentices, you know, there's probably a lot out there who are looking for jobs at the moment from that side of it. But I think I would still be recruiting and in, in doing your adverts and looking for sales if you need them um, when you get back open. Yeah, I agree. We got, um, I got off of one, an interview of one this morning. Um, great girl, um, happy to get involved. She just, started her apprenticeship just before this all happened mm. it's not it's stopped she's no longer got a job with them um there's going to be a lot of young bright individuals out there looking for jobs at the moment and i think for the salons especially for your first month being so busy those extra pair of hands may come in really handy for you um i encourage to carry on as as you are really and keep that gravy train of young talent coming yeah. through yeah. Liam, as you've just done that interview, could you maybe share with everyone um, how you conducted the interview and how it might be different from, say, if the salon was open and you could physically have them in the salon? To, to yeah, sure. Do. It's it, it's one of those uh, sort of things you're just adjusting. It's like with consultations mm -hmm. uh, with Gary, you said that you're doing it over Zoom. Um, that's exactly what we do. Normally, we'd invite him into the salon, show him around, look at the vibe of the salon, what it's all like, mm -hmm. um, try, uh, try and get them all engaged with that. However, um, this way, what we did this morning, we just scheduled a Zoom in, uh, interview. Um, she was she's pretty handy with technology, so she was absolutely fine with doing that. Um, and we just went through the same questions that you normally would with a face to face with an individual. So um, it's it's more just adapting the way that you're conducting the talks, really. And I've found with interviewing or whether it's a meeting with a team member, Zoom is incredible for that, um, or whatever medium that you use to have those video calls, I think they're incredibly important. And we're, we're great communicators as hairdressers anyway, aren't we? So I think it's important to just embrace that and go with the new technology, it's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. And I guess, did you just ask to see her work and that kind of thing? Well, it's more, personally yeah. for me, I don't know how you guys do it, I go from, because I, I, she was a young sister, she's not even done hair yet, yeah. it's more about the attitude. I wanted to see how she how she conducted herself, how she was talking to me. Was she engaged? Was she a little bit like, yeah, whatever, you know? Um, so it's more about trying to get an idea of what they are like face to face. I think you can put on a voice over the phone. Um, so to have something like Zoom, you can just sort of get a good feel of that individual and just have a good idea if they're going to suit your team as well. Um, they need to integrate well. So it's, um, it's important to be able to see that person, I think. I think if you're looking for a stylist and the, the, the looking at the work is, is really going to be all what we can go off at the moment because we can't get them in the salon to obviously see what level they're at. And, and, and one thing to bear in mind if you are looking for stylists is to think um, about the time you're going to have to have an impact on them to make them up to your brand level as well. So it's, I think it's going to be a bit of a tender one for a lot of salons initially. Um, mm. And again, it might be a new way of working as well uh, for the time being. But yeah, certainly um, we like, like you, Liam, we go off based on characteristics and things like that um enthusiasm etc we can we can improve people's skill set but people's person is probably the hardest thing to change isn't it so mm -hmm. well, we've been waiting we were waiting before lockdown for for a new stylist to start um and i did have that sort of conversation with myself about whether i should continue with that but i've got to have confidence that if the demand was there before for me to take that person on it will still be there if not more so afterwards so uh, we're, we're very much rolling with it and I agree with the other guys you can only recruit empathy you can't teach it <laughs> <laughs>
we're kind of we're going over time actually we had a slight issue with facebook at the beginning so i've kept it going for a little bit longer but we're getting loads of questions coming in and lots of people are really loving it i do want to just take it back for a minute back to the british hairdressing business awards which you obviously all entered last year and won which is amazing um if any there's a few more weeks left to enter this year's awards what tips and advice would you give to people who might want to dedicate iron out a little bit of time during the last part of lockdown to actually do that entry process and maybe if you can share how it would actually benefit their business from doing that why it is a worthwhile thing to do well i think about i can start with the benefits to your business i mean obviously we've just been talking about staff i mean mm -hmm. attracting staff is one of the huge things that one of the benefits you're going to get by entering these awards because they're a national award but i think obviously you've got to think about the publicity for your clients and all that stuff and it really does sort of create a buzz in your business really so I would get into an, if I was you. I mean, you've got the time at the moment to sit back and look at it um, when you're not working in the salon and, and really sort of um, analyze your entry to make sure it's, um, it, it, you know, it's something that's going to really do well. Yeah, I'd encourage, I'd encourage everyone to do it personally. If you've, got, um, if you've got a vision in mind, if you've got a, a story that you can put down on paper for your past year and what you've achieved within it, um, I, I personally love entering British Hairdressing Awards, uh, British, British Hairdressing Business Awards, because you review your year, you can see what worked, what didn't work, what could be better, um, and, and how it's affected you throughout the year. I think if you're going to be doing it for this year, you could even incorporate within your entry how you've been dealing with this crisis that's been going on. You know, what's unique? What have you been doing that's made this better for your business and how it's going to be better going back into operating within your salon? Um, so I think now is a brilliant time to get your head down and just put the pen to paper. Yeah, I, I can speak from the heart, you know, be honest as well. And, and uh, you, you tell your own story. I think it's important. Um, your, your personality comes through your entry as well. Not so, don't, don't create anything that's robotic because you, 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 sometimes when you're speaking from the heart and the mind of yourself, you, you're, you're creating the story and it's important to engage with the judges. They're going to have a lot of compassion and a lot of knowledge on what you're already writing about because they've been there and done it, which is why they're in the great position that they're in. And uh, I, I think we that's, that was one thing we did with our entry last year. We, we broke the business down. We, we looked at it from the very bottom all the way up to the top. And then we, we just spoke on paper what we were thinking, what we were saying. And, uh, I, and hopefully that was what come across. And it was very authentic and very genuine. And uh, it, it was, it's about trying to make an entry that stands out from others. And sometimes putting your own personality imprint on it is what's going to, it's going to make it stand out compared to everyone else. And I, I agree with Liam, it, as, as well as looking backwards, it's about looking forwards as well. And I think right now, most of us business owners are looking at the very foundations of our business in terms of operation and finance and everything else. Um, and looking at the business plan in terms of a, a, an awards entry just fits very neatly with what I'm doing anyway. So um, the two go very, very well together at the moment. Yeah. So go for it. Fantastic. We've just had a question actually from Carla who said um, it would be great to enter, but it's mostly for bigger salons, not the little. No, ones. no, 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 um, no, no. <laughs> so it'd be great to hear from you guys what you think about that. <laughs> well, we've we've been entering for many years. Um, you know, even when we had one salon, uh, we were entering the British Head of Business Award. So it isn't for big salons. I think you know there's some fantastic small and medium-sized businesses out there who do things brilliantly. And I know from past experience sitting, um, meeting many people at the Business uh, Awards has shown me that. And, you know, when you then you sit on the night and you see them, them entries come up on the screen, it, you know, it, it's just it's what some of the guys do independently. So, no, it isn't. No, I think it's a, I think, uh, just to give you a bit of uh, insight, really, um, when Tony owned the salon um, a few years back, we decided to enter an awards, uh, national awards, and we thought, you know what, let's give it a go. Let's see how we do. Uh, we only had probably seven people working in the salon at the time, um, so it wasn't very many. So you'd consider it's a small salon. We're a salon from the south coast of Portsmouth. Oh, the London guys always win it, right? So that that's just not the case. Uh, we entered the national award. We were finalised, and then... Tony won his um, first British Hairdressing Business Award for innovation um, uh, a few years back. And then I decided to go in for it myself personally, because I thought, why not? Um, as, and just got to go for it. That's the reality. If you don't do it, you're not going to win. So get yourself in there. 
I mean, we did the same last year. Me and Ella were, were very up and up in air whether to do it. And, uh, you know, we, we, we said, let's just go for it, put all our heart into it. We entered four categories and we got through to four finals positions. And that was our first year of entering. And we were a salon of four years. So we, I'd still regard us as what, what the question was. We're still a small business. We're still growing. We're still establish, establishing ourselves and establishing our reputation. So, you know, obviously winning salon of the year two and Alfie winning apprentice of the year, that, that that gave us a massive leap forward in that reputation because now all of a sudden we, we we've got an expectation now where it, you know we are we obviously we, we are entering again this year we'd love to and um it, we're going with an expectation of can we bring this title home or a different one so uh you know definitely just believe in yourself believe in your believe in your brand and your business that you're building because you might be pleasantly surprised um it, it, get it strong on paper and and you know there's some great great businesses out there that aren't getting applauded for the amazing work they're doing so definitely go for it definitely I have to agree as well um I have one of the um smallest Tony and Guy salons in in the group um but small can be beautiful uh so yeah just just really go for it and I've also met some great people there I think our first nomination was 2013 met all sorts of people uh, at the awards and see them year in year out uh and they're very much not from big businesses all of them so have a go yeah. Like, well, Car Carla's just come back and said thank you so much I'm inspired so there you go <laughs> brilliant well I think we as I say we've got so many questions I won't get through them all so just to wrap up it might be nice maybe for each of you to maybe share your own personal tips or insights as to how you think um, salons can get through the rest of lockdown and indeed the start of reopening maybe just share your own words of wisdom for everyone who's watching from your own personal point of view um who wants I'm, to go first? Yeah. That's, I, I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you go for it. Go for it, Dave. All right. Um, <laughs> I, just have, have faith. We're a great industry. We have great passion. We have great people. And we do great work. So, so have faith. We will get through this. Um, and regarding the entry as well, do it, do it with heart. Um, don't make it a blueprint. Just, just be honest with yourself uh, and with the judges. Um, and both on the award side and the business side, it will be great. Yeah, cool. I think as an industry, we'll come through this bigger and stronger. I think we'll end up in a better place in the end. There's going to be challenges, but it's a creative industry, you know, and that's one thing about hairdressers. We, we do amazing stuff and we'll come out of this great. Yeah, I agree. I think you've got to um, think of it in a way of is, is don't try and tackle it all at one go. It's, we've got a lot going on at the moment. There is no one way of doing it right. My way might be your wrong way. That's that's cool. But we're all individual we'll find our own way through it and we will get through it that's the great thing about it we'll go fingers crossed go back to work on the 4th of july someone's going to be packed all over the country um it's just such a personally as as disruptive as this can be i think it's incredibly exciting period and we can actually come out of this stronger you know take everything bite size break it down trust yourself trust your instincts but most importantly um communicate with your team communicate with your clients and communicate with the industry because um, you'll be surprised if you reach out who will come back and I think the most important thing me and Ella have learned in this is that for the first time everybody was on par because no one knew what was coming no one knew what was happening and we've all learned together so you know speak to those around you get their ideas as much as yours see what's working for them what's not um, yeah and trust yourself be confident um, and like, like we've all said we'll all get through it together we're all going to have a different path out of this so um you know, let's let's make sure we're we're working as a team to make it even bigger and better. Fantastic. And if you want a bit of distraction, get yourself into the British Address and Business Awards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant! <laughs> he wasn't told to say that. Wasn't he? <laughs> I'll just pay me later. It's fine. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, guys. Just one last thing: is there any specific resources or anything you've specifically been using to help get yourself ready that you could share with people if they're not sure where to go and what to do? Well, I think there's all, there's already some great guides out there. Whether it's the guide that HA has put on, whether it's the National Heritage Federation, your own product manufacturers, there's there's good sort of good strong basics that everyone could follow. Um, you know, so I, if you haven't done anything, I'll start there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think personally, I think these sort of these conversations have been invaluable for me. I'll just bit having because I'm not just running the business still. I'm I'm now at home father teaching my children so mm -hmm. you're juggling a lot of things right so mm -hmm. um it's just to have this in the background listening in seeing what other people are up to and what they're doing it gives you great ideas so i think 
what you guys at Hairdressers General are doing at the moment is phenomenal. Um, our Thanks. colour company, Goldwell, they've been amazing as well. Um, with all the online training they've been doing as of late, it's great support there. It looks like they're now, and I don't know if your colour companies are doing, they're getting on top of the PPE and help to provide that with the salons. Um, we've just been given signage come through by email, which has been absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, and just reach out to other people. If you've got friends in different countries, try and get a good idea of what they're up to and, and just get a good feel for them. I think there's a huge amount of solidarity in knowing that together we don't have the answers yet. I know yeah. that sounds a bit daft, yeah. but we really don't, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Reach out to your product companies. Uh, I know Weller and L'Oreal have been doing a great amount of work. Um, we've been doing a lot internally with Tony and Guy, um, but I've also been using the HSE website as well um, for risk assessments and that sort of thing. So I'd have a good look at that. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. I think everyone would agree it's been a fantastic session. We kept it going for a bit longer because we had an issue with Facebook at the start. So we've kind of made up that time most definitely. Um, and I hope we got through most of people's questions. <laughs> um, but I think it's been great just to have that discussion and to be able to brainstorm ideas. And I'm sure you guys won't mind people reaching out to you if they had any questions oh. afterwards, anything like that. Of course, perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And we hope that everyone will use at least some of this time to enter the British Hairdressing Business Awards for this year to reflect on their business and also to help with their planning moving forwards as well. Brilliant. Cool. Brilliant. Good thank you ever so much. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.